Ladies and gentlemen, Imus in the morning. Larry Campbell. <laughs> Larry Campbell. Man. I'm trying to figure out. Well, I've known Larry. I know for over uh, 27 years because we made a record together one time. I mean, he produced a record that and I was drunk while they were doing it. it was, we were doing a we were going to do a Broadway show of the book I wrote, the novel of God's Other Son, and Kinky had written a bunch of songs. They were good, great songs. So I believe Larry and uh, trying to remember who else. I think it was Larry. Larry and somebody else produced it. So, hmm. and I was drunk when they were doing it. So that had to be at least 27 years ago. Right. Well, more than that. So, Larry and Teresa Williams, who sings. One of the better verses I've ever heard of Long Black Veil. <laughs> so, I've got a new record that is really good. Now, you might say, well, you'll say, you say that because you've been friends with Larry. If not, no, I, I, I wouldn't say anything. Nothing. And we'd have told them that we didn't have, we were all booked up. We couldn't get them on the show. <laughs> well, I know how that works. This is, I didn't know Larry could sing this one. I could play anything. But... Played with Bob Dylan for eight years. You need to get him to tell you some of those stories. <laughs> and then with Levon for, and everybody else. Lindy's new jalapeno fresco chicken. What, what baby? The jalapeno. Say that again. Hey, about Dagan. A lot of people ask me about Dagan. I was still the girl that goes this morning. Said, is Dagan going to be with you on the radio? I said, no, they won't let me have her. But I asked her, but she didn't express any real interest. So I was going to pay her more money than she's making here. But she just said, well. She never even never even responded. I sent her an email. So then I asked Bill Shine. He said, "No, you can't have her." <laughs> so stop asking. We're keeping her. I Damn. love you. That's what happened. Damn. Well, we obviously like you, or I do. Right. I've hey, told you repeatedly. You're a liar. <laughs> no, doing this show has been a gift, and I love it, I and I love you and your family you. and your dogs. I got a gift for you. Oops. You do? Well, what? not really. Yeah, I do. I like her. So, uh, seven minutes after the hour. So, Brother Powell's here. How are you? Don't worry about how I'm doing. Well, you know, I'm okay. fine. Mm -hmm. And uh, Senator Lindsey Graham, mm -hmm. he's here. Good morning, Mr. Imus. How are you? <laughs> That's better. You know what you don't have? A lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a Wyatt T-shirt. That's like I do. See my Wyatt T-shirt? Oh, very nice. I got a bunch yeah. of those. You don't have a Wyatt T-shirt. No, I need to fix that. And you don't have a uh, got a why not T-shirt, a leather uh, shirt from Diesel like I do. Well, not on me now. But. <laughs> <laughs> I told uh, Wyatt and Nat that and they said, "Yeah, we don't have them because we're not gay." Right. Well, I don't know what that means. I hurt my feelings. So. Yeah, it's a nice shirt I'm in. Say, hey, Warner, uh, yes. the Warriors won last night. Yes, they did. They uh, it was 97-97, about five and a half to go, and they went on 11-0 run, and that was it. Oh. So. Turn your sets off there. <clears throat> I don't see how the uh, Houston Rocket people beat them. Do you? Well, they had a six point, a sixteen point lead in the second quarter, and they're still in the game with five and a half to go. Uh, but man, that uh, Stephen Curry, he is the best. Well, people say LeBron, but I think Curry right now is the best player in the NBA. Got that plaid shirt on today. You having lunch with KD Lang? Or what's the deal? <laughs> Paul Bull, <laughs> yeah. Chop some wood. <laughs> and uh, they did change. That's a good one, now, man. Yeah. <laughs> like a lumberjack. Yeah. The Knicks lost in that lottery. You know, they came in fourth. Yeah, though. no good. Of course. Wow. So the top ah. three players likely will be gone. Towns, Okafer, and Russell. <laughs> That's too funny. So they <laughs> oh, so I, I, I laughed at because I, I watched yeah. it actually. Oh, you did. Hilarious. And I just laughed out loud when they, because yeah. they, 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 they go backwards, you know, and they got to number four. Knicks. So uh, the, the Knicks, by the way, if you figure the average, uh, the percentage, the, the potential possibility, uh, the, the Knicks were number two. That's right. So they went in, they went in and number two. Potential to get the second pick, right? And they fell to fourth, and the Lakers got the second pick. So, yeah, some irony there for yeah. Phil Jackson. I that's just part of his brilliant plan. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm thrilled to death. Oh, they got great. screwed. <laughs> great. So, um, Steve Mills tried to say, "Oh, this is okay." Yeah, yeah this is great. Yeah, this is We're really great. happy with this. And then that uh, fat little phony slug. Uh, Robert Kraft yeah. has now said they're not going to, at least the team, yeah. 
is not going to challenge the uh, the uh, the uh, the good deal letting the air out of yeah. the football deal. Yeah, right. but you, but you're right. That that only uh, pertains to the uh, chump change million dollar fine and the draft choice. Yeah. So, so the bottom line is Tom Brady is still going to uh, has already appealed. Sir. To the union. That's so right. It has nothing to do with yeah, of course the, not. it's it's you know much ado about nothing. Right. Uh Barney, what do you have coming up, Swain? We have uh Bruce Jenner explaining who he wants to have sex with and uh, Kim oh. Jong un uh, on oh. Dancing with the Stars. Oh, oh. <laughs> there's uh that's just not funny, Bernard. So uh, it, that's it, this is I have the tape. Back oh, you this, one, this one up. All right. He's a good here. one. Here's Connor McShane with the news. Morning, Connor. Morning, I'm in. Well, first of all, Los Angeles. The minimum wage in the city of Los Angeles is going up to $15 an hour as their city council voted to raise it by the year 2020. So that could have an effect on... A lot of people, they say as many as 800,000 workers, but critics say small businesses might suffer being forced to lay people off or even move out of the city. So you have that this morning. And we also have Hillary Clinton. She says now that she wants her emails from her time as sure. Secretary of State to be released of course. as soon as possible. Uh, well, the Here one she, she turned over. I have said repeatedly, I want yeah. those emails out. Right. Nobody yeah. has uh, a bigger interest in getting them out. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> Please stop this. has a bigger Damn interest it. than her. Oh, oh, you're nuts. So release, the ones, release the ones I gave you. Right. The ones, <laughs> the the ones, ones I didn't destroy. <laughs> release those. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, the 30,000 that I uh, deep sixed. Don't worry about those. So. Damn yeah. it, I am so honked off. The, uh, <laughs> right. Mike, uh, Mike Lindell's here this morning, too, the pillow guy. Oh, very good. Mm. And I'm sick of him. I'm sick of his pillows. Oh, that's not good at all. bastard. So. Jesus, what happened there? I don't know. He'll well, be in. Oh. Anyway. I don't know what his deal is. You know, mm -hmm. he's got a hey, Bigfoot, are you here yet? Of course I'm here. Yeah, yeah, where are you going? Going? Of course okay. here. So what the hell are you wearing, though? What is that? I, don't worry about what. I got my yeah. Wyatt T-shirt on. That's yeah, yeah. fine. But that jacket, what is that, a jacket? It's a, it's a leather shirt. A leather shirt. shirt. Yeah. Okay. What? you got to get yourself you a handkerchief <laughs> in the back pocket? <laughs> no, you, you don't you? have one. You know why? Because you're oh. too fat to wear it. Yeah, I wouldn't wear that if you gave it to me. You leave uh, the mask at home and yeah. the <laughs> gag wool? Right. You have leather pants. You're ready for the long weekend. What, Senator Graham? Do you have leather pants? No, I don't. Do you have any pants? <laughs> they come with matching pants. You might as well have none. <laughs> <laughs> a leather shirt with no pants? <laughs> Take a walk on the wild side. Let's do this. Leather chaps. I'm wearing chaps and no pants. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a team <laughs> show. <laughs> and that won't be to the bathroom. <laughs> and the color girls go. <laughs> 12 minutes after the hour. Oh, my <laughs> God. Did you? <laughs> wow. No pants, bro. Uh, <laughs> nice shirt, though. <laughs> Do you have any more news? So, uh, come on, hurry up. This morning, Iraq uh, came up in this. Well, I should point out that Hillary Clinton took some questions yesterday. That's, what, that's uh, where that comment we just played came out of, which I guess was news in and of itself, and that she hasn't been answering very many reporter questions. Yeah. But um, Ed Henry had a heckler to get her to come over to ask some questions. Yeah, he basically did before they. Uh, hey, she Hillary, came... you didn't answer any questions. <laughs> right. And she said to Ed Henry, well, when I get done with these people, I'll, I'll ponder it. And eventually she did. But Iraq, one of the topics, does she think we're better off without Saddam Hussein in power? Mrs. Clinton. I know that there have been a lot of questions about Iraq uh, posed to candidates uh, over the last weeks. I've made it very clear that uh, I made a mistake, plain well, and simple. Please, uh, pretty much they're repeating what she said in the past, that her vote in favor of the Iraq invasion was a mistake. So those are some of the things that came up with well, her. she didn't answer the question he asked, though. Right. So that, or is she going to? Nor did she really with the other ones as well. Just uh, seemed like. Uh, All right. Uh, 13 after the hour time for business news. Sponsored by Peerless Boilers. Here with that is Dagan McDowell. Dagan. Good morning, sir. The Dow added 13 and a half points yesterday. Enough for a new record. The futures are flat. And that Takata airbag recalled, now oh. the largest in U.S. history. 11 car makers have to fix faulty airbags and 34 million vehicles. That's double the number of vehicles already targeted by the oh, recall. The airbag inflators malfunction, explode, sending shrapnel flying. Six deaths have been linked to this, more than 100 injuries. All right, 14 after the hour. Time for sports, sponsored by Pillar Spoilers. Near with that is Warner Wolf. Good morning, Warner. Morning, Iron Man. Coming to you from the NJDiet.com studio. NBA playoffs in Oakland. The Warriors broke a 97-97 tie. Five and a half minutes left. 11-0 run and beat the Rockets 110-106. 34 for Stephen Curry, wow. who had six three-pointers. Harden at 28 for the Rockets. It was the clincher, big three-pointer by Curry. Mike Breen, ESPN. Here comes Curry. Curry for three. 
Bang! Harden deflected and stolen. Curry pulls back. Cross court. Thompson in and out. Rebound tipped and taken by Brewer. Curry with the steal, but a foul. That so, uh, with six three pointers, 30 points for the game. Yeah, tonight, of course, it's the Hawks and Cavaliers in Atlanta. Uh, we talked about the uh, NBA lottery draft with the Knicks coming up fourth. That's so great. Uh, <laughs> it never stops getting funny. They may, they may go like after, porn. with the top three guys, uh, Oka for Russell and uh, Towns gone. Uh, yeah. It maybe leave them a six foot five, this 19 year old guard, the Emmanuel. Draft Charles Barkley. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Mo- <laughs> his name is Emmanuel Moutier. Uh, no college ball played in the Chinese league last year. Uh, from uh, from Africa. That's right, Congo. Well, from the Congo, yeah. Stanley Cup playoffs Went game. Went to high school in Texas. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes, and did. then uh, rather than uh, play in the NBA. We'll go to college. W- went to what? Rather than go to college. Right. Right, rather than go to college. Never mind. Thank you, Tony. Yeah. Uh, I went to China and played with those people. Right. Yeah. And it worked out fine, apparently. Very nice. Uh, now he's on the Knicks. Yeah. Well, he could be. Well, the, not yeah. there yet. Like not that. yet. Take it <laughs> easy. Hey, Ashley, down. are you reporting anything this morning or no? Really big news. KFC is bringing back uh, Colonel Sanders for yeah. its commercials. He hasn't been around for 20 years, and Daryl Hammond of, uh, of uh, SNL fame is going to play him in the TV ad. So that's the big breaking news. <laughs> 16 <laughs> after the hour here on the I'm Mr. Wayne program. What's loaded up, uh, Bigfoot, in the teleprompter? Anything? Mm-hmm. It's uh, Lindsey Graham. Well, let's do that. Good morning, Senator Graham. Good morning, Mr. Imus. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, all happy and gay like a neighbor should. You know, on such a lovely day, I like to bring little gifts to the neighbors on my block. I made a big old batch of my famous sweet nutty fudge yesterday and <laughs> spent all day wrapping up box after box. I was quite the little fudge packer. <laughs> There's about 40 houses in my neighborhood. And there were so many to give out, I had to ask for some help from my friends in my biker gang to help me deliver them. I'm never happier than when I've got something mean and powerful between my legs. Yeah. <laughs> we're a bunch of BMX motocrossers. We call ourselves the Dirt Road Riders. And our logo is a big old burning skull. My housekeeper, Maria Guadalupe, gets a kick out of us. Eres todo en llamas. Eres todo en llamas. You're all flaming. You're all flaming. See, unlike those violent biker gangs, the Cossacks and the Bandidos in Texas, we got together with some other motorcycle groups to provide community service. We got the Bone Lickers, which is a bunch of guys who are on the side compete in barbecue rib contests. Some strong women who used to be known as Hades ladies, but now just refer to themselves as dad on bikes, <laughs> even a group of African-American gentlemen who all work at the same seafood restaurant in Baltimore who call themselves the Chocolate Starfish. <laughs> we all get together every year in Pennsylvania for our charity event, the Hershey Hog Fest. This year, the Chocolate Starfish boys are going to do a big old meat smoker barbecue. <laughs> we believe in giving back to society. This year, we're raising money for Gerbil Rescue. <laughs> I'm so excited to meet Mr. Lindell Amos. He's quite an inspiration. And those pillows of his are positive. Positively yummy. I could just bite one all night long. I oh, bet you good. 18 after the hour here on the Amos and Wayne program. Bernie with a briefing, Lindell with his pillows. There's one of his five favorite songs. Seems like yesterday, but it was long ago. Jane, it was lovely. She was a queen of my night. There in the darkness with the radio. Playing low end. and the secrets that we share, the mountains that we move, caught like a wildfire out of control, till there was nothing left to burn and nothing left to prove. And I remember what she said to me, how she swore. against the wind we were young and strong we were running against the wind i must in the morning continues right now Right now, 
Don Corleone, the Godfather's in the house. Well, let's talk to him. Good morning, Godfather. Good morning, Don Ramos. I was very happy what, to hear uh, Why doesn't the <laughs> Godfather have a microphone? Hello. Hey, Godfather. Hello. Here we go. <laughs> Did you think? Sleep you the fishes. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll do this later. Normally, I have people who do this for me. <laughs> <laughs> no microphone. You a, said no microphone. You just thought, well. That's a silly message. <laughs> yeah. That's really good. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty-five after the hour here on the uh, I Miss the Morning program. Uh, Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams are gonna sing uh, some stuff from their new album. And how are you guys this morning? So. Fabulous, Don. How are you? How did we meet, Larry? Was it through Kinky? Yeah, originally. So, you know, I play with Kinky every Sunday at the Lone Star down there, and right. and you would be there more often than not. And um, the first couple of times we met was. After the shows with Kinky, we'd go up to your place on Astor Place, right? And um, uh -oh. and yeah, I'm, I'm you know, <laughs> enjoy tell, ourselves don't a little tell bit. Too and much. then uh, and then you your great book God's Other Son was being turned into a Broadway show, hopefully. And yeah. Kinky wrote a bunch of tunes and oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and uh, I produced the sessions for the demo for that, and uh, well, some good records we got out of that. Huh? Yeah, right? yeah, it was great music. Yeah. So Larry played with Bob Dylan for eight years, Levon a long time too, and everybody yeah. else. And yeah. How'd you meet Teresa? How do you meet you, with Teresa? Bottom line. At the bottom line. Yeah. You were singing there. Yeah. She was putting a band together at the bottom line, and I got a call, and I didn't want to do it, you know, and, yeah. and uh, it wasn't enough money. <laughs> but then I got talked into it, and then uh -oh. then I saw her, and I heard her sing. I said, okay, I'm doing this. Yeah. <laughs> Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams, that's a great record. My oh, man, I'm not just saying, I listened to it three or four times. Oh, I listened you, to it once when I was working out. All right. And, you know, my workout are like 10-pound dumbbells. But anyway, <laughs> they're going to save that in a second. But right now it's time for a Bernie briefing sponsored by Peerless Boilers. And here with that. This is Benam McGurk. Good morning, Mr. McGoy. Good morning, Mr. Rimes from the NJDiet.com studios. Jimmy Kimmel, he often sends reporters out in the street to ask people uh, stuff about stuff that did not happen. He did so last night. Take a listen. The new edition of Lie Witness News. What did you think of Kim Jong-un's performance? I thought it was awesome. And what did you like about it specifically? I like the groove. The groove, yeah, he does have a lot of groove. He does have a lot of groove. Do you think he's a good role model for other plus-size dictators who want to express themselves through dance? Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, sometimes, you know, sometimes big people feel like they can't do things that maybe smaller people can. Right. And he showed that pleasantly plump people can do it, too. Now, a lot of people were talking about the dance Kim Jong-un did where he pointed the machine gun at the judges. Do you think that was inappropriate, or was it all in good fun? I think... Art is art, and you can do different things, and they mean different things. I mean, it probably freaked a couple of people out, but yeah. it's just dancing, you know? And you would consider him an artist? Yes. Mm -hmm. Were you moved that he wore his father's jumpsuit for the final performance? <laughs> I was really sweet. Mm -hmm. I was really sweet. Do you have any advice for Kim Jong-un going forward now in his Hollywood or dancing career? Just don't, get, don't let the haters get you down, that's all. You think Kim Jong-un should not have been led on Dancing with the Stars? I, I'm not going to disagree with it. I think he would have been awesome dancing. He's, he, I, anybody's liable to training and dancing. I, I'm not going to I'm not gonna knock it. You're not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. He's like, you're not going to lie. No, nah, I'm not going to lie. Well, I, we appreciate your honesty. <laughs> Uh -huh. Oh, man. Kim Jong-un. It could happen, though. 28 after the hour. If you want to buy Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams' album, you just go to Amazon or iTunes, and uh, it's called Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams. Oh. So. 
It's easy enough. They couldn't think of a name for it. <laughs> well, let's call it our names. <laughs> That's right. All right, please welcome now to the I'm Just Morning program, Teresa Williams, Larry Campbell. <laughs> I guess if I'd have paid attention, because he used to sing with Levon Helm all the time. Oh, great. Well, they are really great, God. Great musician. And uh, right. always knew she could sing, but, I mean, Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams, are you crazy? <laughs> Man, well, they'll be back. So please welcome now one of my sort of favorite people. I don't know him that well, but I kind of like him. <laughs> Uh, the guy who founded My Pillow, Mike Lindell. Good morning, Mr. Lindell. Good morning, Mr. Amos. And I'm sick of reading your commercials with <laughs> yeah. pillows. Hey, let me tell you, I, I do state radio stations all over the country, and your name comes up all the time, so I hear you a lot about well, you a lot, too. Well, why did, how, <laughs> how does it come up? Well, they say that the, you either got them in their business right. or, you were, or you set the bar. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that's yeah. pretty nice. It's all good, I'm, yeah. And I, I mean, don't know if it's true, but that's... Right? <laughs> so, um... Uh, 
Uh, how do you manage to worm your way onto this program? I mean, I kind of like it. So, so how does that work? So, I don't know. When you buy advertising, do you say, I want to be on with my boy or what? Well, yeah, I just say, I, I want to be here. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're celebrating 10 years, right? Yeah, 10 year anniversary. Yeah, uh, were you on, and I used to smoke crack, right? Yeah, yes. yes. Well, uh, well, I used to do cocaine, so. Yeah, well, but, I did cocaine and it changed to crack, and then I went. Phew. You know, I stopped doing cocaine before they came up with crack. Right, that was good. Yeah, oh. probably wouldn't be here. Uh, in fact, I missed freebasing too. Right. A lot of, oh man, I'd have been right there. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so uh, did you th- did you come up with the, uh, uh, the with the idea for the pillow while you were smoking crack? No, I, no, I was dreaming. Actually, that was in a dream. You know, oh. They uh, that night, and they, uh, I believe that came from God, and the uh, and then the, but I was for I invented the pillow in 2004. Well, don't minimize. Yeah. Uh, that it came from God, you act like you're apologizing no, for that. No, no, no. Well, you shouldn't. Yeah, I mean, that's, no, that too, that's, that's where legitimate. I've been blessed. I've been blessed with that. Well, your uh, faith is your faith. Yeah, yeah. So. And, the, uh, and, uh, and I did crack till to January 16, 2009. So people always say, well, you invented the pillow then and you're, it's yeah. your 10-year anniversary. I had seven years there where I was my own worst enemy. Sure. Yeah. yeah it was. Uh, oh, you were up one time for how long? Oh, it was about 16 days, and the, the drug dealers did an intervention on me. I went, I actually went down the worst part of Minneapolis, and I couldn't buy crack. Uh, everybody's running away from me until uh, until I went to bed. You know, that's uh, kind of incredible. That the drug dealers did an intervention? Yeah, there's the three of the biggest dealers. They got together. I go, what are you all doing here? And they go, well, you're, you're going to bed, or you're not going to get any more. And... Uh, and I, they were right. I went out, headed down the streets, three o'clock in the morning, and nobody was selling me anything. They're going, you know, it was like a massive intervention. Did you stop that? Um, no. Well, I did that night. I went oh. to bed. Well, yeah. Yeah, I went to bed. I came back. He said, "How'd that work out for you?" And and uh, he took a picture of me, and he said, "You're going to need this for your book." Hey, uh, do we have that picture foot? Did you show it? I can't. I don't have a monitor that because. Yeah. There's. <laughs> also. Pretty good mugshot. Yeah, like, so. but they, uh, but yeah, then they. Uh, oh, there, but for the grace of God, you know. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, it was meant to be, and I didn't quit to quit completely to a year and two months later. But, yeah. but they. Uh, I used to go to AA. That's not about me, but. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to go to AA meetings and lie about drinking. I was still drinking. Right, right. Well, I was sneaking then. You know? right, right, right. I used to speak at AA meetings talking about how great it was to be sober. And people would say, oh, man, Don, you may look great. And I'd say, please don't call me Don. That was the first thing I'd say. Right. <laughs> and, then, uh, and I'd say, hey, man, you really look great. And I was still drinking. So right. just wasn't drinking as much. Right. Course, so. Yeah, I went to a lot of treatment centers in the 80s and 90s. And and then uh, when I quit, I quit everything overnight. That was God. It was just the next day I said, okay, if I quit, I, I want to be freed of everything. And I've never looked back, and I've never had a desire since. So that's that's. Really so what's the deal with this Premium Plus pillow? Is that some scam or what? No, it's uh, ring spun cotton, and it. Uh, How's it better than the regular pillow? It's uh, well, it's it's got a lot of cosmetics, but it's a, it's a ring spun cotton. It's just a it's a better cotton. It's a yeah. premium cotton, awesome. and it's uh, um, it's um. Uh, you know the cosmetics and the inside's the same patented fill that does. Sure, pillow. Don't you know what it is? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> spit it out. Well, that, that, it's a it's top secret. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> but so. they, but they all you know they all work. I don't want to diminish the other pill, but I just made one a little better for your listeners. And hey, have you ever? Uh, I'm talking with Mike Lindell from my pillow. You know, you ought to make a deal. I mean, have you ever tried to make a deal with one of these motel chains? Yeah, we're working on that. The um, right now, radio is so big and uh, and direct to the customer. Yeah. And, and uh, but we are, we are working on the the hotel. The- like old Debbie uh, down there at the Best Western in Huntsville, mm-hmm. she's our friend, and we stay there once in a while. And uh, I bet you could get her to care. She's a, she just got appointed the manager there. I bet you could get her to. Yeah. Because she keeps a my pillow for me there. Oh, she does. Yeah, because I I I wasn't kidding. I I I tried to I stayed there one uh, weekend, and uh, uh and I didn't have a my pillow and I my God my neck was killing me and I had a headache and I was, uh, ugh. Yeah. so uh, people thought I was making it up. I wasn't making anything. So. Well, yeah, you go right back to where you started. And people I hear that from people all the time. They forget their pillows on vacation yeah. and. And they go, well, it's it's just like I was before I got the my pillow, neck aches, headaches, and the, you know the sleep. And so you're here mm-hmm. this morning. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that you want me to ask you, or that you want to say, 
that's so so that you don't leave it all pissed off. Say, well, Federal how come Law Enforcement and Homeland yeah. Security Foundation. Well, I got, uh, the, uh, you know, I've come I got the Patriot the Award a couple weeks ago here in New York. Congratulations. And Governor Ridge is the chairman of that, and we do stuff for uh, federal law enforcement for their families if something happens to them. Oh, right. So, and they uh, just doing a lot of stuff with my own foundation, too. You got married, didn't you? Huh? Did you get married? No, that was a couple of years ago. Oh, well, I remember married, that one. Married and divorced. No, no, I remember that. And she got the truck. And, right. Yeah. <laughs> you got well, it. You, well, you were, I mean, you were such a dumbass. You went to Reno. Mm -hmm. And uh, wasn't that where it was? No, no, it was in my home state of Minnesota. We had, oh, okay. we had well, not a dumbass. Yeah, we had a big. Well, you, you warned me. You said <laughs> I told you not yeah, to yeah, do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. What kind of friends off these me and Lindell? So, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you have anybody in your life now? Yes, yeah, we. Because uh, I tried to fix you up with Lise Wheel, you know. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm. yeah. Well, that's a Harvard-educated lawyer, and she's so much fun, and she's smart. Right. And. Uh, She's not an unattractive woman. She's right, actually right, full of attractive. Right. I mean, I give her a bad time, but she's really. Right on. Yeah. Some people think she's actually hot, you know. So. Yeah. <laughs> but you had no interest in her, right? No, that we were, that was a bad time. That was uh, um, my, a lot of stuff was happening in my company, and I was. Uh, well, do you think you'd want to take a run at her now? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, uh, hmm, uh, perhaps not. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for your business for the radio station. And uh, for the Fox Business Network, we appreciate that. I appreciate you. You uh, amazing. Four years we're coming up on. No wonder you get tired of reading about my pillow. <laughs> I don't get tired. Well, you know what? I, 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 so I run into people all the time, and they say, are they? Well, people always say, well, how, what, 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 what you know, what's the I man like off here? I'm like, just like I am on here. Right, you know? right. But they, a lot of times people ask me about the pillow. So. Yeah, yeah. And uh, once in a while, I run into somebody and say, well, I didn't do anything for me. And I oh. said, well, how did you sleep before? I said, I slept fine. I said, well, then it's not for you. Right, right. But millions and millions of people can't sleep. You can't. Oh, absolutely. It's a universal problem. Sleep deprivation affects yeah. everything we do, you know. Anyway, God bless you. Nice God to see you. you. Again. Don't apologize for your belief in God. No, I, mean, I don't apologize. Okay, yeah, good. No, absolutely not. I got, I got the sense you thought where, maybe I'd make fun of you. No, and believe no me, that's where all my uh, all my ideas come from. And, and uh, you know, that's why I give back. I just feel I give back to the people. And they. Uh, I feel very blessed that I got, that God picked me to, you know. There you go. To help uh, so many people. So. Uh, ain't nothing better than a baby Jesus. So, yeah, you know. Uh, anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mike Lindell here on the IMAS Morning Program. Get out there and get yourself a pillow. Go to mypillow.com. Type in a code word IMAS. Get half off. What kind of deal is that? 11 minutes now until the hour. Ladies and gentlemen, Imus in the morning. Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams are here with their new album called Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams. Mm -hmm. That's a nice what album were, package. What were the odds of that happening? Yeah. Although, if you buy stuff as I do, it uh, either down well mostly itunes in fact almost exclusively, mm -hmm. and you don't get the you don't get the album package. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. But you go to Amazon, you could, well, you can download it there too, but you could buy it. Uh, there's some great songs on it. And they go sing again, and then they go sing some more. Wow. Mm. So, and then the blondes are here, uh, Ed Ramos and Lise Wheel. And, um, you know, Lise, uh, of course, uh, she's looking for a man. Mm hmm. And has been for some time. Did you ever meet her, Sandra Graham? Yes, I had the pleasure of meeting her last week. Well, of course, you're single. Well, I'm I'm kind of Senator off. Senator Lindsey Graham here. I'm kind of off the market. I'm I'm engaged. Oh. My fiance Rosalie lives up in Canada. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh huh. Why is that significant? Where she lives? Well, because she's not down here a lot, you know. So people never really seen her. Like I don't go to functions with her and stuff like that. People wonder where she is. Right. And I. T Tell them she lives in Canada. That's why, you know. What do you think? Well, aren't you thinking about running for president? I am. I am actually. I'm going to announce on June first. That's why I, I grew my whiskers because they told me if I was going to be president, I was going to have to have a beard. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Uh -huh. You know the way it's. I mean, I don't know if this is possible or not, but you could almost be your own first lady, couldn't you? <laughs> 
I don't know what you're saying. No. What are you trying to get at, Alma? Use no, such a caution. You know, Tony, <laughs> you know, Tony Tupac Power. Yes, I do. Matter of fact, I, I, I fisted him back in the green room. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. Oh, wait, no, fist, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Fist, fist I pounded him back in the green room. No, no, no. It's, you're not helping, man. <laughs> what did the market do yesterday, Dagan? No, the Dow was up just ever so slightly, but it hit a new record high 13 and a half points. Ashley, what's oil selling for? Oil is uh, up just a little bit, around 58, 65, uh, but still under 60 bucks a barrel, which we hit earlier in the. Uh, there you go, 58, 55, uh, 58, 58. Uh, we were above 60 bucks a barrel at the beginning of the week, so yeah, you know what? Uh, it's pretty good at that level for uh, those well, of us fine, who like to uh, go <laughs> fill up. <laughs> fine, God, uh, just tell me what it's selling for, and then be quiet. Oh, God. 58, 58. Thank you, Mr. Imus. Uh, hey, uh, Warner, the yes. Warriors won. Yes, they did. They was tied with uh, five, well, five and a half to go, and boom, 11-0 run. That was it. Uh, elsewhere, uh, the Blackhawks and Lightning played triple overtime. Game was over 2 a.m. New York time. The Blackhawks win it. Oh. And uh, the Nats won. Two-run homer beat the Yanks bottom of the 10th. And the How'd Met Bryce Harper do? Well, Bryce Harper had another home run. The guy's hitting. He did? Yes. He, he's hitting 336 and leads the National League in home runs and RBIs. So here's an outside shot for the Triple Crown. Right. And uh, the Mets. Of course, it's May. It's early, yes. Yeah. A little early. A little and early. the other thing is, uh, we talked <laughs> about it yesterday, it is official now. Uh, no more uh, boring extra points. Now it's going to be a 32 or 33 yard kick. And you can also go for the two point conversion from the two. But the big change is if you miss the extra point, whether it's kicked or going for the two, the other team can run the ball back and they get two points. Up till this time, it was a dead ball. So now that, that is a change in the rule. Mm -hmm. What and now? If they like, all right, let's just say, yeah, like, like they try to kick from the thirty-two yard line. Yes, or it's not the thirty-two yard line. It's from the what? Well, it's it's the uh, twenty-five yard line. No, uh, just add ten. Yes, uh, th th it would be the twenty-three yard line. Do you, you know? Yes. Okay. What is it? Well, the line of scrimmage is the fifteen, but they all, the holder always stays seven yards back. And then you have to add 10 yards because of the goalpost. All right. So you always have to add, add 17 yards to ever, wherever the yard line is. The okay. okay. Now, let's just say the other team blocks it. They can run it back? Yes, for two points. They can't run it back for a touchdown. No, not the extra point, no. It's like college. It's already Yeah, they stole the college rule. Be quiet, Connell. I'm talking to Warner. Right. Odd. When we're talking sports, why are you uh, sticking your nose in? Somebody has to at some point. <laughs> Very good point. Yeah. Barney, what do you have? Colonel Sanders, Bruce Jenner, and uh, Jimmy Kimmel blubbering a little bit over saying goodbye to David Letterman last night. All right, night. the blondes are coming up. More Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams. Mm -hmm. But let's do the news now. And here with that is Connor McShay. Morning, Connor. Morning, I'm in. We'll begin with Hillary Clinton, who we've uh, been talking about this morning, saying she wants her emails to be released as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, from I want to release mine, too. From her time as Secretary of State. Well, she did take questions from the media yesterday, and that's rare. And one of the questions, with all the money she's made, how does she expect uh, everyday Americans to relate to her? Here she is. Well, I think that most Americans uh, understand that uh, the deck is stacked for those at the top, and I am running a campaign that is very clearly stating we want to reshuffle that deck. We want to get back to having more opportunities for more people so that they can make more out of their own lives. Reshuffle the deck, I man. Reshuffle the deck, says Hillary Clinton. So um, the other stories this well, morning. Well, O'Reilly's right. I mean, she, uh, she, uh, they can ask her these questions, but she ain't got to answer any of them, and they're not going to press her. So. And you don't have to in that uh, setting for her. It's easy. Just working on a bumper sticker for Grandma and the Big Dog. Oh, you are. Yeah. So you have a word. You have anything you want to share with us this morning? Or? Uh, well, uh, that's I. Uh, I'm not down. The wording's not right yet. Oh, that okay. doesn't flow well. It's yeah. uh, right. But yeah. uh, they whacked Vince. They'll kill ISIS. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> well, that's not right. Like I know. It's... They, <laughs> they whacked Vince. You know they'll kill ISIS. It's just, uh, it just doesn't flow. Mm. It needs to be yeah. something. You guys work on that, would you? Sure. Well, yeah, I like yeah. the first part. They whacked Vince. Right. And then we need to. So, whack grab on the big dog. Whip ISIS. Yeah. I don't well, know. They whacked Vince. They, wha they whacked Vince. Or whip. I don't know. No, ISIS. Uh, ISIS. 
I don't like the ISIS part, do you? They iced Vince. They iced ISIS. They iced ISIS. They iced Vince. I don't know. Right. Right. We'll work on something. We're making sausage here. Ice, right. ice is fun to watch. Yeah. Oh, good. Tweet us your responses. Yeah. There's co- controversy brewing over uh, buses and who rides on them in the Middle East. The Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, has now overruled his defense minister and canceled this plan for bus segregation. There was a major backlash over there. The defense minister launched a three-month pilot program segregating the buses. Israelis and Palestinians were segregated on the West Bank uh, following repeated complaints from Jewish settlers, but the plan sparked an angry uh, uh, rebuke, and critics said it constitutes uh, basically a form of apartheid, so they're not going to go forward with that. Speaking of that, uh, uh, segregation and all that, 12 minutes after the hour, please welcome now. To the Amos Morning Program, Tony Tupac Powell. Brother Powell, what's going on? I'll tell you what's going on, Amos. I don't believe in mythological creatures. That includes black Republicans. In fact, if I was in the woods at night and a black Republican walked out of a UFO, I'm taking a picture of the black Republican. (laughs) There's been plenty of UFO sightings, but not a lot of black Republican sightings. Hell, you'd even have a hard time finding a black Republican at the Republican convention. It's like looking for a milk dud in a snowbank. <laughs> Even the Bisco doesn't have that many crackers in one place. Every time you think you see a black Republican at the convention on TV, you realize that it's just some brother holding a tray of mini sliders and bruschetta. <laughs> there was, however, a recent sighting of a black Republican. Ben Carson was at Tommy's Country Ham House in Greenville, South Carolina, eating eggs and grits when his front tooth fell out. <laughs> I guess it got knocked loose by all the lies flying out of his mouth. Mm. That didn't stop old Ben from giving his presidential stump speech. He picked his toothless up, (laughs) stuck it in his pocket, and started talking. At least I think that's what he was doing. Boy, it sounded like a boiling tea kettle. (laughs) Let me just say this. You can't be running for POTUS looking like Leon Spinks. Ain't nobody going to pay attention to your policy ideas while you're looking like a damn subway poster. Mouth made his tongue look like he was in jail. Boy, it looked like he could eat saltines and whistle at the same damn time. I don't believe in a tooth there either, but I sure hope you do, you snaggle tooth bitch. Oh, man. Maintain. 14 after the hour. Let's do business news. Sponsored by the Hackensack. Uh, University Medical Center. And here with that is Dagan McDowell. What's going on, uh, Dagan? Good morning, sir. The Dow at an all-time high, and the futures are heading up. 14-point gain on the Dow futures right now. Theft of debit card data at ATM machines soaring to the highest level in at least 20 years. Oh, man. The Wall Street Journal reports this is happening at bank ATMs and also those independent cash machines. Oh. You see it at convenience stores, shopping centers, restaurants. Thieves steal your information from your debit card and then make counterfeit plastic. Look out. 14 after the hour. Ashley, what do you have? Interesting, London police have arrested nine people after last month's big heist in London's Diamond District. They're calling them the geriatric gem thieves. They arrested a 76-year-old and his 50-year-old son, and the rest of the suspects are aged between 43 to 74. Not, Mr. Imus, that 74 is geriatric. No, that is a uh, quarter after the hour. Any more news, Connell? Well, I don't know. You might be interested in this. Congress looking at getting rid of labels on packages of meat that say where the animals were born, raised, and slaughtered. The House Agriculture Committee considering a bill that would repeal this uh, country of origin label two days after the WTO WTO ruled against part of it. The uh, thought is these labels from the U.S. put Canadian and Mexican livestock at a disadvantage, so they may not label them anymore. Oh, man, I mean, that's just a no. God, come on. Yeah, I figured you'd be working. All right, still 15 after the hours. Time stands still. Wow. Let's do sports, sponsored by Peerless Boilers. And here with that is Warner Wolf, one and one. Morning, Iron Man, coming to you from the NJDiet.com studio. NBA playoffs last night in Oakland, game one. The Warriors beat the Rockets 110 106. It was tied with five and a half left. Well, it wasn't tied at the end. Uh huh. No, that's right. Okay. Very good analysis, Iron Man. Wow. 34 for uh, Stephen Curry, including six three pointers. Uh, it was 106 97, two minutes left. And here was the call, Mike Breen of ESPN. Just exquisite basketball. Mm. Barnes inside the <laughs> Mark. That's a 28th assist. What did he say? <laughs> it's exquisite. Oh, it's exquisite <laughs> basketball. Yes. Yes. Really? Yes. Fabulous. Yes. <laughs> skate, skate, skate. Oh, man. Well, where's my phone? Let me email him right <laughs> yes, now. That's right. Well, he's he's got to be in San Francisco, right? Brain? Yeah, or yeah, Oakland, yeah. Well, one or the other. Yeah, yeah. that's right, right, whatever. Right across the bridge. Water sure. continues. Uh, tonight, the Hawks and Cavs in Atlanta. The Hawks uh, beat the Cavs three out of four regular season. They're one point favorite. 
a Stanley Cup playoffs game two in triple overtime. The Blackhawks beat the Lightning 3-2, to two, series tied at one. Corey Crawford had 60. I thought the Blackhawks were playing the Ducks. Uh, they are playing the Ducks. Well, why'd you say they That's beat right. the Lightning? That's right. I knew that. I wanted to make sure you <laughs> Good job, you I'm did. in. Good, jo Good catch, ass. I'm in. And so uh, the series is tied at one. Tonight, the Rangers yeah. and the Lightning, not the Ducks. Yeah, well, somebody. Uh, game three <laughs> sure. in Tampa tied at one. You know, the uh, Lightning goalie is six foot seven. I'll be darned. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> baseball, the Nats beat the Yanks 8 6. Ryan Zimmerman's two run over, two outs, bottom of the 10th. Exquisite. Here was the call. Charlie Slows, WJFK Washington. Fastball, line drive right field, deep toward the corner. Will it stay fair? It's way back there. It hits the foul pole. No, you know it's the fair pole. The uh, signal's getting weak. Water. That's right. <laughs> Cardinals. The radar screen is starting to it's just a little tiny. Bit. Cardinals <laughs> beat the Mets. Uh, John Neese <laughs> bombed out 11 hits, eight runs, five innings. Terry Collins on Neese's performance. Yeah. One of those nights where he just didn't have his stuff. Oh, oh darn. And that uh, lottery in the NBA, the Knicks, uh, <laughs> who had a second best shot at taking the number one pick finish fourth oh. so when the Knicks go the top three players will be gone you want to hear a feed here's Knicks general manager S Steve Miller after Mills, uh, Mills after the draft <laughs> yeah, do you know anything what are, where are we <laughs> put that wine away we're here the other morning they sang this bring it on home to Memphis Five after the hour here on the Ivis Point program. The Blondes are coming up. Dan Ramis and Lee Wheel. Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams are here. Their new album is called Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams. Mm -hmm. Larry played guitar with Bob Dylan for how long? Eight years. Or did you? Are you the one who told me the story? <laughs> or you guys were all up playing cards in some castle somewhere, and he came out on the balcony? Do you remember that? No, I don't remember that one. No. Wonder I mean, who told me that. Could yeah, I, you're the only person I know, unless Kenky told me. That could have been. But we were in a castle in Scotland, and a dress. Uh, the, the castle was the dressing room for. for oh, this, what? Yeah, for uh, Stirling Castle in uh, in uh, up there near Glasgow, I guess it was. Well, the story was that the guys were all downstairs playing cards. It was about three in the morning. No, that wasn't me. No. No. It was Kenky then. If very likely. Yeah. Well, Kenky would know. You ever talked to Kenky? Haven't in a while, but I'm going to see him in August. They're doing a, uh, Cleve Hattersley is doing a Lone Star reunion show at B.B. Uh, King's here in town. Kenky will be there and Robert Gordon and Commander Cody and Teresa and I and a bunch of people. I talk to Kenky, not every day, but yeah. frequently, one, yeah. at least once a week, so. I'm sure. But he's not swimming with the other ducks either. <laughs> <laughs> now, Larry and uh, Teresa are going to sing in a second, but it's time for a Bernie briefing. Uh, and that's sponsored by Peerless Boilers. Good morning, Bernard. Morning, boys, from the NJDiet.com studios. Uh, I'll keep it brief, uh, but funny because of Teresa and uh, Larry. Larry there. Now, take a listen to Conan O'Brien from last night. Jeb Bush has defended the right of business owners to refuse services 
for same-sex weddings. He says that's okay. This has put millions of lesbians in the rare position of being anti-Bush. <laughs> KFC is planning to bring back Colonel Sanders. They're bringing back Colonel Sanders. Yeah, that's okay. You can applaud. Yeah, it's good. Because if there's one thing that'll bring America together right now, it's an old white guy dressed like a plantation. <laughs> that's, that's actually a pretty good line yeah, from him, funny. who's ordinarily not very funny. 28 after the hour, please welcome now once again Larry Campbell, Teresa Williams. <laughs> Are you crazy? Oh, God, what a great record. 23 till the hour here on the uh, I Miss in the Morning program. Oh, man, did I uh, love that. What is that called? It's called You're Running Wild? Yes. Mm. Larry Campbell and uh, Teresa Williams? Yeah. Oh, God, come on. <laughs> yeah. That's country music, man. I put that on a tape loop. <laughs> You're going to hear that all they, day in the office. I could, too. They sound, They look great, and they sound they great. great. Yeah. And well, they're attractive people. They're mm -hmm. very attractive, but together, I love their look together. Yes. And they're so talented. Yes, they enormously are. Enormously talented. Okay, time now for Blonde to Blonde with the very attractive Lise Wheel and equally attractive Deidre Imus. How are you guys? Doing great. Good morning. So, Lise, good. Well, first uh, yeah. of all, what happened? Uh, congratulations to Hackensack Hospital for what now? Ha the Deirdre Imus Environmental Health Center with Hackensack University Mouth Health Health Network even now right. because they've acquired a whole well, go network. Ahead. What did what happened? We are the top 20 uh, we second year in a row um, through green health care like the greenest hospital top right. they do top wow. 25 and we've been awarded again for all of our excellence in sustainability greening 
all of our initiatives. They still the use your grinning and cleaning products over yes, there? Yes, that's one initiative. We have multiple now oh. initiatives that we've done. By the way, I need some And we're that. the leader in what we're doing. And congratulations to Lise Wheel. For? Uh, well, you both the kids have got into MIT. Yes, yes. Wow. Pretty good yep. for you. I'm pretty good. Son is graduating this June and daughter starts in September. We're going to Austin, Texas in the morning mm -hmm. to see my very close friend, Bill Powers, at oh, the University yeah. of Texas. Right. And uh, Nancy Brazel and uh, Zach Cage, a kid we sort of unofficially adopted, is graduating. I know and that. we're going to go down there. I'm and, so excited. Uh, Going so to the uh, be, going to be in a hotel there and get that mini bar going. And, come on, let's do this. <laughs> and the mic you're, pillow, you're going. He's not focused on the graduation he's ceremonies. The, it's all about the over to man, and the food. And the going pillow. over to Manuel's and get me a lip lock on a big old chimichanga. And what's that Italian joint we're going to? Vespaio. Oh, yeah, that's a great place in Austin. So One of the best Italians. Now, Mike Lindell was just in here. And I tried to get him interested in you because, to be serious... Yes. I really think you're. A, I think you're. You're. You have a. You're very smart. You have a great sense of humor. You're very attractive. You're a lot of fun. And so I said, well, uh, but I mean, I don't know. Try to get him to take a run at you, but, but, uh, d uh, but you <laughs> but know you what? Maybe you can't you force love. Right. Exactly. Right. So. But maybe what you need to do yeah. is be a, a little more aggressive yourself. Why? Don, I think she's a, she's spoken <laughs> Why should for. I? No. no. No, she's not spoken <laughs> for. <laughs> She's got oh, some goodness. fat loser now she's going out with, but I mean, I guarantee this guy doesn't. Uh, he's not. He's not. Uh, he's not ahead of the big pillow deal. Mm. That boy's <laughs> making some serious coin. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay. <laughs> well, I just wondered if you'd be interested. Right. Can we move on? I thought that wasn't an issue at this point. Baby King died. Do you, you know who he was? Yeah, of course. That was last week. Yeah. Did you have a BB King favorite song? Hmm. No, no, not one that I can think of just top of the head. I have one. What? Which one? Backdoor Santa. Uh -huh. Love it. Backdoor Santa. Yeah, the Christmas <laughs> song. Did you ever hear Backdoor Santa? I <laughs> think I have. Yeah. Three o'clock I think blues. on this program during Christmas. Of course, the thrill is gone. Who? How could you not like yeah. that? That's epic. My favorite B.B. King song was Sweet 16. My baby yeah, Sweet that's 16. a good one, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're all good, though. So uh, you both are aware of the George Stephanopoulos situation, mm -hmm. right? And give me your take on that, Lise. Well, I don't know if he should resign or not. I mean, he's worth so much money to ABC, but it's just such an ethical. It's always about the money, at least with you. You're no, just... no, no, that, no, no, that no. was on the front page of the of the Post yesterday. How much? No, but how much he's worth to ABC and how much a no, big deal? He so just many, signed his contract. It all comes for 100... down to the money. You follow the money, like the phrase goes. With but that's every, important. Why decisions are made in life? They're why? not made but for the right reasons. Decision. It's all about the money. I was Could just you? about to start talking about the ethics of the whole thing. Yeah. Well, then get I, to I, it. I had the get ethics. To the I said I was getting there, but you have to preface it with the reality. No, you don't. Everybody knows that. No. Deirdre, maybe not everybody has been following this as closely as you and I have. Okay, and stay on course. Right, what about it, the ethics? It's like I was saying, oh, the ethics. What's the matter, Liz? <laughs> always do this. Yeah, how do you get that flustered? Hey, I, if hey, I were a lawyer, I'd be all just, over your oh, crap you in the be, you would, you hey, would, you hey, I'd be Liz. slapping you up I would squash the you like a bug. You would lose every case against me. You'd be a little ladybug squash, yes. Welcome to me and Wyatt's world. I feel so sorry for you. Would you be quiet and let her talk, Deirdre? The ethics, is what I was trying to get to four minutes ago, is that he gave all this money to a foundation and then he interviewed a guy who'd written about the Clintons they didn't disclose any of this stuff and right. that's wrong He's, he kind of had a mealy mouth apology but it probably wasn't enough oh. you know Ooh. you always give a synopsis like you're still in college like didn't wasn't that I, just a synopsis of what fine. am I supposed to do synopsis was fine Hmm. Yeah, what's, what? Oh, what? Most what, brilliant. What's I'm a little, what say? little, what's, little rodent. Oh, that's that just so. First, the fact that ABC highfalutin. even hired him. You well, know, let's start there with no moral compass and lack of any kind of ethics. How do you know that? Just because he was How do I know for that? Because he worked for Clinton and then he hires him. He wasn't a, he was never a journalist. He, he was, wasn't a trained journalist. He, he didn't have any experience. He was hired, I believe, he at first have as any an experience. analyst. And then he was And then so the little rodent they... gets into that position all these years. They lock him in. It's like they have nobody else, really, because they have him as their little butt boy for the Clintons all these years. Then he's so no, transparent. He, I, so transparent that he just started giving the money, what, in 2011 to the Clinton Foundation? Because he's like, oh, my God, if I don't start giving them money, I won't get an interview with Hillary. Uh. 
Do you think that's he exactly what really was going on? Did yeah, that. exactly. He like, oh, I better support her. I better spend, tell everybody I'm, I, I really want to help works. AIDS and HIV. He's and we're the only ABC. ones that can help these he would people. Get an interview with Hillary I don't care. Yes, I don't are. care if they're flying around and spending millions of dollars in private jets and only giving a you little really, to the AIDS oh, victims. Oh, oh, the private okay, jets. Though. Oh wait, wait a second. You're going off on private jets? Oh, oh. you? Yeah, Lise. You, private you, jets. You, you that's fly the in private jets. No, no, Lise. You're an idiot. Private <laughs> jets at the foundation. A 501 c 3 a not-for-profit <laughs> charity pays for it? You think that's okay? I think it's a our private jet. <laughs> we've never had a foundation or a charity pay for our private. It's with our own money that we earned, Lise. Come Come on. On. Yeah, you're an idiot. No, that, that, that pisses me off. Because if <laughs> you that, think it's that rhetoric, you're like Hillary. You'll just spin lies no, and you're spin them and you're spin them and spin them. You, you were rodent. suggesting that's that we, exactly. Can you believe you're suggesting, suggesting that? I'm suggesting that one who flies in jet planes should not talk that about other people that fly. That would be called unethical, and, and the Clintons planes. do that. No, no. You just said it. The Clintons. No, that's what you, we pay for the private jets with our own money. Not with foundation money. So your implication? No, my implication is, is bullshit. Yeah, what? Yeah, exactly. It's bullshit. In jets. Beep. That he's flying around in private jets. That's and my they're implication. They're paying no, for that's it with not foundation what he said. money. Well, the Clintons. With the foundation money. The Clintons. That's for not example, Stephanopoulos the, gave them seventy-five thousand dollars. You can, you can, you can rent the private jet for a couple of hours for seventy-five grand. That's the, where that went, little George. The Clintons are doing that, and that's wrong. I was saying George is flying on private jets. Not having anything no, you to do with that foundation. Lion Lion that. No, that's what I did. You're a fat lion you, creep. You, well, not fat. No. <laughs> What's the matter? What's fat. That? That's okay. I apologize for that. From, oh my from beautiful and smart to fat no, line creep. There are lots In like four your minutes. Well, for example, like your friend Michael Bolton, who sang at one of your weddings. Yeah. yeah. That well, creep used creep. foundation well, money. Well, another that rodent. Creep, that creep used foundation money to fly around on a private jet. Exactly. I have well, no, no idea but, if that's true or not. Yeah, he well, did. No, it was no, all... no, I know it's true. Oh my my point is, could you stop talking? Uh, my point is, yes. your implication was that we did, and that's... No, my implication well, was can't. that he did. Beep. George did. No, no, you're the complete. Stop. Roll back it's the a quarter tape. That's till what the, It's a quarter till the hour here on the Amnesty Morning Program. If you spent a, 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 a scintilla of the time that I've spent helping people in this world, you you'd be a now. better person, <laughs> and you wouldn't come in here and act like... I mean, and it, come on. It, it wasn't quite anyway, different a quarter to running a charity like that versus how the Clintons and I Stephanopoulos comported disagree. himself as I well. I don't disagree. We will stab you in the neck. <laughs> we will. How, do you, how, how about that? Oh, All that's right. going to be great. Uh, I'm really looking forward to my no visit violence. down to Texas. Topic number two. Uh, a sex toy retailer called Love Honey uh, allowed, oh, res uh, uh, allowed researchers to data mine this database of over one million sex toy purchases in order to see what could be inferred about uh, British sexual proclivities from the things they bought. I don't know what he's talking about. The research revealed that men buy large butt plugs oh, okay. at a much higher rate than women. My question hmm. is, what what is a butt plug for? Why would you buy a butt plug? Do you know? What Please? size is your butt plug? I I don't even know I what come it in different is. Size. I don't know. I think it has to do with anal sex, right? Hmm. A butt. Pl I'm just well, guessing. I actually them? don't know. If you have, know what? Maybe what you know? I got a I'm not familiar. And you just Bernie, do you know? Yeah, Bernie would know. Uh, <laughs> Bernie? Me no. <laughs> Hell no. Lou, do you know? Uh, sure. I they, know all about it. They have, them on, they have them on private jets. <laughs> they have them on private jets. jets. <laughs> fly around but on. if it's a sex the toy. Is Senator Graham around? Yeah. <laughs> if it's a sex toy, then it must be something like that, right? Hmm. Well, I guess. And now, finally, the hmm. Dalai Lama what? has claimed that he may be reincarnated as a mischievous blonde woman. And it won't be you. Oh, it makes sense. It won't be a jerk like you, Lise. Wow. God, what a creep. So anyway, I'm so great. why would he want to be a love. blonde? I think I, first friend. of all, stop wearing a diaper. I think that's, that's he's that not. Color. It's oh, like Dolly? a toga. It's they're his deal. Oh, it's nice. I think it's a diversion. Yeah, because talking about it because it's been this whole struggle with the Chinese, the chi China, oh. you know, and Tibet. Right. 
The Louvre. And so he wants his, his throne really. Up a little bit. Well, I think it's it is a diversion right. because this could be real problematic when he goes if who gets in. So he'll just. I think it's a very. Poli I think he was being smart in how he. He's really transitioning. Right. He said that politically. He can take it's, my it's actually more political than it. Oh. It sounds frivolous, but it's not. Oh, Anybody get that job? Like leash. That butt plug out. Don't. We're never getting a ride in our private jet. Please. Um, we're back here, I think. <laughs> Having more fun. <laughs> Talking about butt plugs? Oh, sorry. How about Lace Wheel and uh, the dead of both of them claiming, you know what a butt plug is for? Yeah, it's to keep you watertight. You know, so in case you go swimming or something like that, you don't sink. Oh. Okay. You, mean, you mean to maintain? Yeah, to maintain. <laughs> okay, good. Why don't you? Well, I'm you not know, Googling don't Google butt plugs. Please don't Google butt plugs. No, I'm not doing that. Not again. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anyway, Larry Campbell and um, oh, Teresa Williams are coming up. Now I remember who told uh, Sandy Helm reminds me of uh, Levon's uh, wife. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that, that it was Levon who told me the story about Bob Dylan and the uh, castle deal. So uh, that's, that's not a great story, but it was funny, but sort of. But, so it's something I would do. So. Uh, <clears throat> anyway. Hmm. Maybe when he told it. Right. Pardon me? Maybe I'd... when Levon told it. When well, Levon told it what? Maybe it was funny. Well, it was funny. Yeah, Lou. So. Damn right. Where's my jet? <laughs> <laughs> Where's my butt plug? <laughs> what size? Dropped, dropped it over there. <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> five till the hour I'm, now. I'm wearing it. Water? I'm <laughs> Again. <laughs> I must, I must in the morning. <laughs> well, the story was. Did I ever tell you the story about the butt plug, Lou? What you say? I don't. I don't think so. Well, they were all. It was about three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and all the guys in a band, and that's when Larry was with him. And uh, Larry probably told us to leave on, and Larry just doesn't remember. But they were all sitting down there playing cards. And Bob, who was hard of hearing, as everybody who all those guys are, people, he comes a, a walking out on a balcony. Yeah. And uh, they're all sitting down there and looking down on him. And they look up and say, oh, there's a man. And so uh, he ab abruptly turned around and uh, stalked back into wherever he'd come from. <laughs> Apparently, in some kind of minor snit, you know. So uh, a few days later, he called a band meeting, hmm. and he they uh, they they never according to Levon, they never had band meetings. I mean, what was why would you need to have a band meeting if you're on the road with the, you know? And he said, "Look, Dylan says to these guys, this is the story." He says, um, "You know, I treat you guys great. I pay you well and all that." He says. Well, I don't need you to sit down and call me a moron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> so he just what he I just said there's a man, it's not like moron to him, so which is something I would Yep. Well I can't hear anything either, so <laughs> 